However good the equipment and hardware may be, however competent the crews, accidents can and do happen. The challenge of preventing pollution, recovering ships and cargoes, and restoring safe navigation must be met by the professionals. Salvage is a complex business. You need special equipment, the best people, and long experience. Complex salvage operations demand a vast range of specialist skills. Many risks must be faced. There are few organizations in the world that have the necessary expertise and the appetite for risk. This is why very few people in the world ever get to see pictures like this. Few people, even sailors themselves, really know what is involved when situations like this come about. Salvage operations can occur anywhere in the world. This is the Sea Transporter, a bulk carrier that ran aground off the coast of India. She beached close to an important tourist resort, her bottom plating ripped and punctured. This was a heavy grounding. Vent pipes were forced up through the deck. Bunker tanks were ruptured and oil flooded into the holds. To remove the wreck, the hull had to be cut in two. The fore section was floated off first. The aft section, including the engine room, was much more of a problem, and the hatch covers of the bulk carrier ruled out pressurization of internal spaces, as might be done in a tanker salvage. The salvage team's first priority is to prevent further release of oil. An oil boom was deployed to prevent damage to wildlife and protect the area's beautiful beaches. This oil boom is rolled on a huge reel for easy transport by air. The oil is moved towards the skimming pumps by water jets. The oil in the holds is jetted into a corner to make it easier for the pumps to extract it. Cutting the hull in two requires great skill and professionalism. Both above and below the surface, where visibility is almost zero.
To increase buoyancy, the water must be pumped out of the hull. But the first job is to seal the many holes. On the salvage vessel, special patches are prepared. These will be welded across the sea transporter's damaged plating and the openings in the bulkheads. The internal spaces can then be pumped dry. After weeks of hard work during the preparatory phase, pumping now begins. This is a time-consuming operation and goes on day and night. Areas of the sea transporter's double bottom are still inaccessible to the divers. It is simply too dangerous to send them down to complete the cutting process. So the tugs swing the virtually separated foresection back and forth. Metal fatigue did the rest. Salvage expertise of this caliber has its roots in history. The Dutch were salvage pioneers. The shallow waters of the Netherlands and an active shipbuilding industry produced plenty of casualties. The combination of salvage experience in home waters and a spirit of enterprise explains the leading position of Dutch salvers in the global salvage industry today. This worldwide presence is founded on a long history of true commitment to salvage. Efforts to separate the two sections of the sea transporter finally succeed. The weight of the stern section must be reduced. This was why the accommodation block was cut away and removed. The vessel's engine room is a picture of devastation. The removal of the stern is not an easy job. The first move was to remove a section to make way for the pontoon. Complex engineering and steelwork reinforcement was required to create a platform strong enough to take the heavy loads. The stern section will be lifted by the flotation pontoon forward and a shear legs crane at the rear. Everything is timed to take advantage of the tide. The pontoon is brought into position with great care. The shear legs is positioned aft. Everything is in place. The tugs are in position. The first attempt to refloat then starts. Some movement is apparent, but the sea transporter won't budge yet. Work continues and everyone is looking towards the next high tide. Uh, she's free, uh, Roger. She is free, uh, so he up on your starboard anchor wire, please. 
Success. The stern is afloat. Free and ready for one last voyage. Smith is headquartered in Rotterdam with area offices in Houston and Singapore. These centers are responsible for a global network of offices supporting the group's international operations. Every salvage operation is different and so is the mix of expertise and equipment required. A vast number of items could be needed from breathing apparatus and chemical suits to special pumps and scientific instruments. Some items may stay in the warehouse for years but you never know when you'll need them. So when equipment is needed, it is needed fast. This is why it is stored ready to go. The equipment can be carried in standard aircraft pallets and containers for immediate mobilization. This all makes possible Smith's pledge to be at work on scene anywhere in the world within 24 hours of an emergency. But most casualties occur at sea, so onward transport from the airport of arrival to the casualty is almost always necessary. Salvage involves all types of vessels, from sunken fishing boats to grounded car carriers. from product carriers damaged by explosions to huge oil tanker casualties. Beyond the safety of life, the first job here is to remove any remaining pollutants from the vessel. Then, by pumping inert gas into the tanks, sufficient buoyancy can be created to refloat the vessel. Once afloat, the oil mark clearly shows the previous draft. Projects like this demand the ability to move some of the largest man-made objects in existence, and in extremely difficult circumstances. It is not a job for the faint-hearted. Nor is this fire, the threat most feared by seafarers. And the problem can get worse if there is a heavy swell, a strong wind, or a danger of explosion. Smith has exclusive rights to a new and extraordinary firefighting agent for marine salvage tasks. This is Pyrocool. It cools the fire, inhibits combustion effectively, and is biodegradable. It is a product with benign environmental properties and can deal with the largest ship's fires. Brazilian waters. This container vessel was carrying a mixed cargo, including some extremely toxic chemicals. No one could be sure about their condition, and this was the South Atlantic the grounding occurred at an exposed location on an island near the Brazilian mainland. The heavy swell meant that the containers had to be discharged from the sheltered side of the vessel. This required a new access route. Here, the salver's first job was to build a temporary road across the narrow neck of the hourglass-shaped island. After initial cleaning, the recovered containers are lifted onto the pontoon used to ferry them to the island. A mobile crane unloads cargo. A straddle carrier carries each container to the pontoon moored on the lee side of the small island.
The recovered containers were then shipped to a nearby port. Safety is paramount in a salvage or wreck removal operation. Everything is subject to constant checking. Nothing is left to chance. Too many people have too much to lose. Most of all, the people working at the scene. In this case, Smith had a site office in the nearest port where all activities were coordinated. Smith's team had done their homework. They became familiar with the precise details of the vessel's layout and the identity and contents of each container. But the exact condition of some containers of hazardous substances was unclear for a long period. Water quality in the holds is checked daily to detect contaminants and watch for reactions between chemicals. But unloading must continue. Empty containers have to be dewatered. This is essential as flooded containers are too heavy for safe handling by the cranes. Each container is also decontaminated. The contents of many containers require careful handling. As a precaution, medical expertise and resources are available around the clock. I let the strop in. Op deze komt er een via. Precies in het midden ja. boven wordt. Ja. Oké. Okay. Dan kan je dat even kijken en op het gaat. Oké. Okay. Dan gaat. These men are instinctively careful. Divers wear special protective suits at all times. There is very limited visibility, and a diver's lift is used to bring the diving teams to the exact working location. Of course, in the hold, it is pitch black, and chemicals have discolored the water. Visibility is very poor around the ship. All stop. Zijn gestopt, Johan? Pick up slack. Pick up slack for the diver. Diver komt terug naar de kooi. Every time a diver returns to the surface, he is thoroughly washed down with fresh water. Containers receive the same treatment, with every stage of the operation designed to keep all pollution within the confines of the hull. This container is full of dangerous cargo and its condition is unknown. A chemicals expert advises on safe procedures. The only way for face protection to work is 
masks. We're going to have to wear these filter masks. Unfortunately, two of, <coughs> two of the substances are the same color. They're yellow. I believe that the one that is leaking is, is the amsonic acid. It's going to be hard, hard work. Uh, there are some medical implications if we get it inside us. And we've got to avoid them at all costs. This needs very careful attention. A team is selected to recover the contents of this container, which has been underwater for five months. Special masks, chemical suits, and detailed preparation. There have been drills with other team members. Everyone knows what to do if something goes wrong. The container is opened carefully. In this case, the bags appear to be undamaged. Now, to the next stage. Every bag is counted. Every container is checked, emptied, the contents repacked, and, if necessary, moved to the shore for onward shipment. Every salvage is unique, yet every salvage has common elements. The need for expertise, men of experience, the specialists, the special equipment, a determination to succeed, whatever the odds, whatever the difficulties. This film provides just a glimpse into the complex and challenging world of salvage. <laughs>